Hi guys and welcome to another IA video. In this video I'm gonna look at a statistics IA or a possible statistics IA. So arguably I should have done this before because statistics IAs are arguably the most common type of IA and with reason there is plenty plenty opportunity to to do everything you need to score well in an IA um, and it's a very obviously good opportunity to create some kind of real life situation that you're interested in and then follow the criteria to make sure you um, score well in each of them. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at this particular example here where we're looking at income and happiness. Now I've just made up this data here but it's debatable. Does a greater income make you more happy and we're going to talk about all that in a second and I'm also going to talk about how um, we can use all these different topics in just one fairly straightforward IA and I'll get to that um, in just a while so first guys I want to well as always as I always say can you please like and subscribe if you find this useful and click on the link on the website below to um, to check out my website. Now, for those of you that no doubt won't click on that link, I just wanted to show you very quickly what my website's all about. So, if you go here, this is the home page. You just see a nice um, photo, and da down here it's choose your course. There's a little bit about me and some testimonials. Anyway, the main part is here. When you click on one of your courses, whichever one it is, they're all pretty similar, uh, except with different topics, obviously. But let's say I click AIHL. What happens is I get to, and I'll just change this to preview as a student, you get um, all these videos. So it's essentially videos. There is a lesson, a video lesson for every single topic and subtopic. Now, if I actually click into one of them, what happens is here on the left, you have a list of all your videos. So everything from topic one, everything from topic two, all the way down to topic five. There are literally hundreds of videos in this course alone. So this is everything you need for topic five with a video on each of them. In each video, there is an example, at least one example that is relevant to obviously that topic. Then we have the internal assessment section, which is a lot of the videos from my YouTube channel, but it also includes sample IAs with me talking through them and kind of giving them scores to give you an idea of what a good IA looks like. And then after this, I have videos of all the past papers. These are the specimens, specimen paper one, two, and three. Then it goes on to May times on one, paper one, May times on two, paper two, or times on one, paper two, et cetera, et cetera. So check it out um, and let me know what you think. Okay, back to this. So what I'm gonna do is slightly different to what I've done in my previous lessons is I'm actually going to take a past paper question and show you I almost use it as a blueprint for writing a really good IA so this is actually a HL applications paper 3 question now when I did this this was actually in May I think it's May time zone uh, I think it's May time zone two, paper three, question one. When I did this question, I thought this is just a perfect, it's like a blueprint for an IA. And I'll explain why as I go through the question. Those of you who do standard level, don't worry. There's lots of, there's lots of this question, if not all of it, that you'll be able to understand. Um, and when I go through this example, obviously guys, what I want you to get out of it is not to actually do income versus happiness but to see that you can choose your own data or whatever interests you um, and follow possibly the structure of this of this question in whatever way you see fit but that you can adapt it and make it work for you but let's assume we're doing um, this this data which is annual income and happiness score now specifically what it is is it's this girl Juliet who's a, soci a sociologist who wants to investigate if income affects happiness amongst doctors 
So what she does is, and this is what you can do, this is, this is sampling, and hence why the first thing on my list here is sampling, and actually I might just put this list over here so we can see it. Okay, let me just put that there. Okay, so what she does is she obtains a list of email addresses of doctors who work in the city, contacted them and asked them to fill out an, an anonymous questionnaire. Now you can do that. It doesn't have to be doctors. It could be students in your class and it might be about, I don't know, something different. Participants, participants were asked to state their annual income and respond to a set of questions. The responses were used to determine a happiness score out of 100. Of the 415 doctors on the list, 11 replied. So this is sampling. This is a sample of the total population of 415 doctors. Now, straight away, and the reason I say this is such a nice kind of blueprint for an IA is, the question actually forces you or asks you to reflect, which is one of the criteria for the uh, for the IA, to reflect and talk about how Juliet, who's doing this investigation, could make things better. So question one AI straight off the bat is, describe one way in which Juliet could improve the reliability of her investigation. So here, look, this is why I've put here sampling, it's part of the SL course, reliability and validity, um, this is, well, th these are actually in, in the HL course, but certainly no, no reason you can't talk about them in, in an SLI as well. Describe one criticism that can be made about the validity of Ju Juliet's investigation. So look, obviously this is not a perfect situation at all. She's just got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, sorry, eleven replied. She's got eleven, eleven responses. So it's not a perfect uh investigation by any stretch of the, of the imagination, but your investigation doesn't have to be perfect. In fact, it's better if it isn't perfect because you can uh, be critical about it and show critical reflection. Anyway, so she gets all these, all this data, and then she looks at this one here, this K, and says, hang on, this, this doctor's income is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine dollars, $123 million something's not quite right. So she immediately says it's an outlier and removes it from the data. And it, 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 it again, guides you um, into explaining why that's the case. So just one possible justification for her decision to remove it. Well, it's pretty obvious why she's removed it, but that's why I've put here outliers and box plots. You could actually draw a box plot of this and this, two different box plots, and look at outliers. Are there any outliers? Do you need to remove them from the data? Discuss it, talk about it. Um, build it into your IA and um, yeah, write about it. Okay, then what it says is, for the remaining 10 responses, she calculates the mean happiness score. Look, I've put mean here, so she's calculated the mean. Um, sorry, she calculates the mean to be this and, the, and then it asks you to calculate the mean for the annual income, but again, you can calculate the mean, nothing wrong with doing that. And then it says, determine the value of or. Pearson's product moment correlation coefficient. This is correlation and linear regression, um, which is something you both need to do in standard level and higher level. Okay, then this is when it kind of moves into the more, the more HL uh, type of maths. But guys, if you're doing a standard level IA, you are allowed to use higher level, um, you are allowed to use higher level maths in it, of course, um, but it's not always recommended, but you're certainly allowed to do it. Anyway, Juliet decides to, car to carry out a hypothesis test on the correlation coefficient to investigate whether increased annual income is associated with greater happiness. So this is, HL students, hopefully you're, you're familiar with this. This is the, a linear regression test. So it's actually testing, yeah, maybe this, there, there's correlation within the sample but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's correlation within the whole population. So what we do is we run a linear regression test at a 5% at a significance level or whatever significance level you choose. I'd probably recommend 5%. And then you can determine if there's enough evidence to accept or reject the null hypothesis and you can really get into you can get into hypothesis testing that's why here i've put hypothesis testing and linear regression testing it's the same thing um 
for this for this example. Then it says, um, determine whether there's significant uh, evidence and justify your answer. And, and the justification is all part of the of the reflection. You can do that again. Write about that in your A. Then this lesson is not over. And by the way, guys, this is quite a nice. I think paper three question. Like the paper threes are. They can be some questions in paper three can be really really challenging but the the these ones or this particular question is not bad i think so she then wants to create a model to predict how changing annual income might affect happiness scores so she started this is this is modeling it's, li it's linear regression modeling so to do this she assumes that annual income in dollars x is the independent variable and the happiness score y is the dependent variable you can talk about that that makes sense it's are we saying that income makes you happy or making you happy gives you more income well i guess the whole point of this is to, to check that if you earn more uh is it making you making you happier so the income is the independent the happiness is the dependent so she uses this linear model now guys you even in sl or hl know how to do this well once you do this topic you will know how to do it you find the model um that's this question here find a and b and then you interpret you interpret it referring to income and happiness so always talk about the model in uh, in context relating to what you're what you're dealing with in this case income and happiness in your case it can be on whatever you're whatever you're doing and then um she looks at a quadratic model because maybe i don't know exactly what's happening here but maybe there's a situation where actually as you get let's say let me get rid of this let's say as you get um as you earn more money yes you start getting happier because you're earning more money but maybe what happens is you start the people that are earning so much money maybe they're the people that are actually uh working too much and that's why they're earning so much money and they're actually not happy and that maybe it comes down or maybe it does maybe it doesn't i don't know i don't remember what happened in this question but perhaps that's why she's considering using a quadratic model and again when you're talking about this in your ia you mention all these things you say okay well why would i even consider a quadratic mo model find uh, C, D, and E. You can find that with your calculator. Now you can. Some some students like to show how you find the, all this without a calculator. It's not really needed to be honest, because you don't need to do that in an exam. So you don't necessarily need to do it in an IA. But you do. You do need to explain uh, explain why you've chosen that model. Okay, find the coefficient of determination for each of the two models she considers. Okay, so here you find the coefficient of determination, which is which is actually a, a HL topic, and then you compare the two models. Now this is something, okay, here it says, Juliet decides to use the coefficient of determination to choose between these two models. Comment on the validity of her decision. Now that's something that I always talk about is, just because your correlation coefficient is bigger, or closer to one. That doesn't necessarily mean it's a better model. Um, so you got to be careful. So so it's actually not. This is not a good decision. It's not valid what she did, because the quadratic will always have a better or a higher or a correlation coefficient, um, or a coefficient of determination closer to one than the linear model. Okay, nearly done. Um, so after presenting the results of her investigation, a colleague questions whether Juliet's sample is representative of all the doctors in the city. A report states that the mean annual income of doctors is 80,000. So Juliet decides to carry out a test to determine her whether her sample could realistically be taken from a population with a mean of 80,000. State the name of the test with which Juliet should use. This is a t-test. And again, for those of you doing HL, if you've done this topic, this will make sense. Those of you in SL, no reason why you can't look at t-testing if you want to go a bit further and get those really, really high grades. Um, and then you perform the test, state your conclusion in context. So you don't have to do all of this, guys. Depends what your what your um, what your aim is, and what your goal is, and what your what 
what data you're looking at. But this, I think, when I read this, I thought this is just really, really, uh, this is a really nice idea to help uh, explaining a nice statistics. I, okay, that's it, guys. Shorter than my Lewis Hamilton and uh, Max Verstappen video, I hope, which was very long. But um, the last thing I'll say is, yeah, obviously, guys, this is a HL um, applications paper three. So it's so that's what I mean, it's a perfect IA for HL applications, but that also makes it a perfect IA for for uh, standard level applications. And question I often get is, well, if I do, if I do analysis, can I do this type of thing? And the answer is yes, certainly you can. So, uh, standard level is perfectly fine because you have to do most of these topics anyway in standard level. In fact, all of them are in standard level. And if you wanted to go into some of the this detail for, and you're doing analysis, that's that's absolutely fine. The, the yeah the the analysis and applications IA are exactly the same. They're based off the exact same rubric, so it would be marked it would be marked the same way it would be for for applications. So so yeah, this is a good a very good solid idea for any of the four courses. Okay, guys, hope that was useful. Let me know. Well, let me know if you want if there's any particular video you'd like me to make. Some people have asked um, for various ones, which I've which I've said no to just because they're difficult or whatever. But but feel free to ask if you have any questions about this or anything else. Please ask in the comments, and I'll see you in the next video.